we're going to a different economy, and we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go. But clearly, we're, we're we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're going. We're recovering, but to a different economy, and it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology. And I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for for many workers. In Silicon Valley, and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. This effort, and China has big plans for this. They intend to seed um, their digital yuan into the global environment by giving it away to visitors at next winter's Olympics. When they arrive at the airport, they're going to get di yuan digital wallets. They're going to receive digital yuan. They're going to use it uh, throughout their visits to Beijing, and then they're going to take it back to their home countries. They see this as a huge advantage. Why? Because who controls the underlying protocols, who un controls the underlying standards of the future of money will control the future of money. We, we need to lend more money. We've got to lend money out, man. That's how we make money. We get people to give us a dollar. We lend it out nine times. So we lend it out nine times. We need something to lend the money on. So back in the 50s, they're like, everybody should have a home. They grinned. Everybody should have a home, right? Oh, man, that's pretty good. That's, we should call it something like the American dream. And you just listened to Grant Cardone. And before I get into the video, remember, guys, mortgage. You have to understand etymology. Those who have my book understand. Mort means death. Gage means pledge. That means death pledge. And you're going to understand that once I finish this video. It's a little boring, but you definitely need to know, especially if you own a home or you're just thinking about buying one. When you're talking about an investment for 20 or 30 years, you want to make sure you can invest in something that you can afford, not to impress people, because hard times, the storm comes for everyone. Let's get into the video. Welcome to the Crypto Teacher. And guys, you know I come with that video just to make you think. And this video is about the mortgage dilemma that we are in. Now, I know there's a lot of people that took forbearance that actually don't need it. But there's a whole lot more that actually do. Now, we have the Bureau of Consumer Financial Protection under, of course, the Biden administration are trying to change the Regulation X. Now, they have until May 10th of 2021 to put in your comments. But basically, this would amend the C-Word Emergency Pre-Foreclosure Review until December 31st of 2021. But this is not the wild part about this. Now, I'm going to read this to you. It states the Bureau is proposing amendments to Regulation X to assist mortgage borrowers affected by the C-word emergency. The pandemic has been devastating the economic impact in the United States, making it difficult for some mortgage borrowers to stay current on their mortgage payments. To help struggling borrowers, various federal and state protections have been established throughout the 13th month. For example, the C-word aid relief, Economic Securities Act, the CARES Act, which was signed into law May 27, 2020, providing up to 360 days of forbearance for mortgage borrowers with federally backed mortgages who requested forbearance from their service and attest to a financial hardship during the C-word emergency. In addition, in February 2020, the Federal Housing Agency, Federal Housing Administration, Department of Veterans, and the Department of Agriculture announced they were expanding their forbearance programs beyond the minimum required by the CARES Act for a maximum of up to 18 months forbearance for borrowers who requested additional forbearance by a certain date. Now, it states the Bureau is concerned that a potentially unprecedented 
number of borrowers may exit forbearance at the same time this fall when they reach the maximum term of forbearance. As of January 2021, there were more than 2.1 million borrowers in forbearance programs who were more than 90 days behind on their mortgage. Those who went inside the forbearance program March and April of 2020 will reach the end of their forbearance period September and October of 2021. So you have an estimate of 800,000 borrowers exiting their forbearance program after the 18 months. And it goes on to say this potentially historical high volume of borrowers exiting forbearance within the same short period of time could cause a strain server capacity, potentially resulting in delays or errors in processing loss mitigation requests. Of the borrowers not in forbearance program as of January 2021, there were around 242,000 who were 90 days or more delinquent. Now let's get into the interesting part. Second, the Bureau proposes to permit servicers to offer certain streamlined loan modifications, options made available to borrowers with the C-word related hardships based on evaluation of an incomplete application. Eligible loan modifications must satisfy certain criteria that aim to establish sufficient safeguards to ensure that a borrower is not harmed if the borrower chooses to accept an offer of an eligible loan modification instead of completing a loss mitigation application. First, to be eligible, the loan modification must be made available to a borrower experiencing the C-word hardship. Second, the loan modification may not cause the borrower monthly required principal and interest payments to increase and may not extend the term of the loan by no more than 480 months. That's right, 480 months, 40 years from the date the loan modification is effective. Third, any amount that is borrowed may delay paying until the mortgage loan is refinanced, the mortgage property is sold, or the loan modification matures. Must not occur interest. And the server may not charge any fee in connection with the loan modification and must waive all existing late charges, penalties, stop payment fees, or similar charges promptly upon the borrower's acceptance of the loan modification. Finally, the borrower's acceptance of an offer of the loan modification must end any pre-existing delinquency on the mortgage loan or the loan modification must be designed to end any pre-existing delinquency on the mortgage loan upon the borrower satisfying service requirements for completing a trial loan modification plan and accepting a permanent loan modification. If the borrower accepts an offer made pursuant to the new expectations, the proposal must exclude borrower from accepting requirements with regards to loss mitigation application submitted prior to the loan. So guys, to sum this up, the World Economic Forum stated, you will own nothing, but you will be happy. Instead of it just extending the loss mitigation period, Instead of automatically taking the months where we know people have been hurt and just put it on the back of the loan, what they're trying to do is kick this can down the road. Now, come on, guys. They go from a 30-year mortgage to a 40-year mortgage because they don't want to extend the time for the loss mitigation or just take that money and put it on the back of your actual mortgage or calling these people up earlier and start their loss mitigation now, so by the time October and November come, they'll already be set. So we see how the Fed has shrunk the housing supply, because right now people don't have to worry about paying rent, they don't have to worry about paying mortgage, and then also what they're doing is they're kicking this can down the road, so therefore what's happening to mortgage prices, they keep rising, they keep going up. So right now we have young people that are buying homes at prices that are totally ridiculous 
and what's going to happen with the actual mortgage. Eventually, this ends. Mortgage prices are going to be cut in half. Majority of people are going to be in a loan where they're upside down. Where they're going to lose the house anyway. Because guys, remember, when it comes to the new world order, it's all planned out. Have a nice day.